Welcome to Last Breath Live, where we share strategies, tips, tricks, and tactics for hunting big whitetails, food plots, tree stands, trail cameras, and more. The goal of this series is to bring you educational outdoor content live as it happens in the field. Created by hunters for hunters, thank you for tuning in to Last Breath Live. Do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. Turn on the bell notifications and drop us a comment in the section below. Historically, this farm and this herd really prefers beets, greens, turnips, radishes, bulbs, and brassicas. So we have made this plot bigger, and this is a transitional plot. This is the bottleneck, and then it goes into our clover and then our soybeans. So we'll have different maturity of greens and different types of forage throughout the season. But we're putting this in the ground. We have rain coming the next couple days. We're going to mix it. So the way that I do it is I just literally take the winter greens and the tall tine tubers, put them in a five gallon bucket, mix it all together. And uh, we we always hand spread it. We never trust the spreader. Uh, not that you can't use an automatic or electric or a manual gate spreader, but putting it down by hand lets you see that you don't miss any spots. So a little bit of sweat equity, make sure you do it right. Back it up one second. Um, we also applied 1200 pounds of 19, 19, 19 to this plot. Um, like we've said it before, we'll tell you again, buy it from your co-op, go to one of them. Most all small towns have it. Uh, that was 1,200 pounds, 19, 19, 19. And our total bill tax out the door was $189 and like 12 cents. I mean, if you were to go and buy that at the store, uh, do the math, Grant, you're the math teacher. You can buy 10, 10, 10, a 10 pound bag of 10, 10, 10 at Walmart for 10 bucks. It's a buck a pound. Yeah. So you're looking at roughly a thousand, eleven hundred dollars after for tax half of the half of the strong strength. Yeah, for half the strength. So to put the equivalent down on here, you'd be paying two grand. Yeah. If you bought this via bag. So talk to your co-op. Usually they're always good guys and they help you out. So we put the fertilizer down. We tilled it in. We have killed this off and maintained this. There's some small grass in here, but for the most part, it's perfect. And. Uh, we're gonna mix it up, put it out, and we'll probably see germination within 10 days. Oh, look at those pretty seeds. stick so I don't turn my hand blue. Think with your needle. What you got there? It's a stick. Off of a cottonwood tree. So you don't turn your hands blue? See how blue that stick is? Yeah. Look at that. That's that rain guard coating. And it's awesome, but I just don't want it on my hand. Nice tan line. You like that, bud? Man, that's sweet. I know. That's a watch wearer's tan line right, right there. Right there, bud. Any tips for spreading that? The only tip I can tell people is literally that rain guard, that Duracoat that they put on these seeds is a cedar's best friend because it's dyed blue. You know, like if you go buy clover seed or turnip seed or any seed, really, it's like a brown or a white or a pale gray. Blends right oh, in. Oh yeah, you can't even see it, man. So like this blue stuff, um, two tips when you're seeding. A, if you have an ability to add it, like. A lot of people make a coating that you can put on seeds if you don't use white tail and stew, but it already comes on. Coat your seeds with a colorant so you can see them. Uh, and if not, just try not to trample around too much on your seed bed, and literally you'll be able to see your footsteps. So it's a nice thing about tilling versus no-till or just disking. 
but you know, right here you can see where I probably me cut across when I came down here. But as I walk, you literally you leave footsteps. So as long as you don't trop around too much on your seed bed, um, you should be able to just hammer it out. And the, the way I do mine is I go down and back. I don't do around the rosy. I go just like I was playing a cornfield. Here we go. So this cedar always throws it out to the left. I use my thumb right here, my index finger, just to manually control it. There he goes. So a little bit about this plot. So this freshly churned up dirt right here, it kind of bends around the corner up at that point where the tractor is between that point it kind of goes off towards the east and then we have two acres of clover it's kind of that lighter green band in the center right on the north side of the tractor and then on the opposite side that's our fenced in two acres of beans so this will be <clears throat> a little bit short of a little short of six acres when we're done but like Garrett just said you can see the seeds and where you've been if you use this particular blend of seed just because they're like royal blue in color you can see them right there they got the royal blue you've got a green seed and there's also a yellow seed in this blend and there it is so it's a pretty nice food plot choice for somebody that's looking to add green to the mixture and just in case you guys didn't see this the first time this is what we're planning so these are the turnips we had a lot of good success with them last year they were about the size of baseballs last year but we didn't fertilize them near as hard so uh, hopefully those are a little bit bigger this year and uh, one, one of these sacks plants two acres so that's the exact size that we're planting here um, by White Teal Institute it's called Tall Tine Tubers and then the other thing we're planting here is White Teal Institute um, Imperial White Teal and those are as you guys can see winter greens so that's the mix going in and this is just going to be like the salad before the deer go and have the steak up there at the north side, which is where our beans are.